just lean and let your hands move with your shoulders so your hands kind of stay square with your shoulders and just lean yeah so when you lean left your left hand will lower and your right hand goes up lean right bam and move under the center of the glider move a little faster than it's falling there you go beautiful nice job Lean left, a little faster. Lean, get that head down away from the risers. Lean, wind smoothly, smoothly, smooth. Okay, now turn, turn and whoops. Okay, stop. Oops, grab the bridge. There you go, back up, lean left. Don't turn, lean, lean. There you go, lean, roll, get that. Yes, there you go, yep, yep, right, 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 right. Go to the right, lean. Move into the wind, face the glider, you're turning. Turn. Face the glider, face the glider, that's a turn. Oh yeah. Lean. Remember not to go downwind. So that direction was, you needed to back up into the wind a little bit. Keep coming back. This, you're losing it because you're killing its air. This hand goes all the way up. Keep moving into the wind. Give it some airspeed. A little airspeed, steady pace, steady pace. Don't stop, don't stop dead or you'll shut the wind off both brakes. Bury the brakes, bury the brakes, bury the brakes. And move towards stall it. Bam, ball it up, ball it up. Nice job, sir, it's looking good. Uh, watch your direction, because all I had to do is grab you and move you into the wind and we saved it. Otherwise, if you start going that way, you're making the wind die. So just don't hook turn off of your runway. Keep going down your runway, baby, runway. It's looking really good. The uh, I'll come around, we'll get you on no hands here pretty quick, because you're getting close. It's looking great, man. Here, relax the arms, right? Right break, one half ounce, left break, a half ounce. Right break, a half ounce, keep walking. Nice job, left break, into the wind. Don't change directions, turn, keep going into the wind. Stop, turn left, turn left, turn left. Stop, stop. Okay, so you just needed to turn left because the glider was to your left. Um, and you keep changing direction and going this way and that way instead of into the wind. Remember, your airplane is launching this way. You gotta just keep moving into the wind, into the wind. Oh yeah. Uh, hands forward, relax, completely limp, run back. Stop, stop. You're literally doing the splits there. Feet together, side by side, face the glider. Smooth as can be, walk backwards quickly without your chest changing directions. Go for it, nice and quick. Brakes, left brake. And there you go, left brake. Your left hand drops a little. Left brake, keep going down your runway. Go down the runway, right brake, go down the runway. Don't change directions with your body. Just keep walking, keep walking. Right brake, keep walking down your runway. There you go, left brake, walk down the run. Beautiful, there you go. Slow down, just nice steady pace. Right brake, keep going down the runway. Don't change directions, go down the runway. Right brake, nice job one. Left brake, go down the runway, don't change directions. Right brake, keep going down the runway. The runway, keep going down the runway, turn right. Turn right, turn right, keep walking. Relax, 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 easy, gentle. Just turn and walk down the runway. Right break, one ounce, smooth, keep going to left break. Keep coming down the runway. Relax the arms, feather fingers keep coming down the runway. Relax the arms, relax. No death grip, left break, little left, relax the arms, limp, limp. Look at that, man, boo yeah. Okay, bury the brakes. Pull both brakes as far as you can. Pull the brakes, bury the brakes, bury the brakes, bury the brakes, bury, bury the brakes. Yeah, because yeah, the car's are behind you. There you go. So nice job, you just went all the way this way. You, one big thing everybody keeps getting wrong is you keep going off the runway sideways. So make sure you keep going down your runway. Lean left, lean, face me, lean, yes. Yeah, look at that buddy, lean right. Okay, turn and bow, don't move, don't move, bow, wait. Turn and face the glider. Face the glider, lean left. Lean left. Walk back into the wind. Paramotor training is much harder than it looks. Now, people that just want your money are gonna try and pretend, oh yeah, come out, we'll get you flying the same day or the next day. What a load of crap. That is a nightmare. There are all kinds of things that have to be worked into reflexes in your body and as you watch new students that are taking real actual training and you're trying to give them input there's so many little things there's no way that you can physically do them instinctively uh you know with <laughs> with very quick reaction times it's just it's not possible it takes about 25 to 60 hours 
of glider control and we can only give you one piece at a time as we keep adding piece after piece after piece as you're practicing things into reflexes then we can add another piece and another piece we can't give you a hundred pieces all at once because you simply couldn't do it the only way you can actually attain real actual glider control is to have you know master level instructor standing there with you in the perfect location where you can get 25 to 60 hours of glider control everybody that comes through super training literally that first day immediately they realize they made the right choice <laughs> because even just based on the location if you realize you know when your brain clicks and you see oh my gosh i gotta turn walk pull i gotta go the right direction i have to have my hand in the right spot i have to pull exactly to the ounce the correct amount of pressure at exactly the fraction of the second that it needs to be pulled and do it exactly right and the other hand has to do exactly the other thing and then both hands have to go up and down controlling the pressure of both sides so i'm controlling the pitch while i'm moving and turning and leaning and walking and moving in the correct direction there's so many things that all have to be correct and that's just the start. Wait till you start controlling the altitude of your body, give or take one inch using the lift of the glider. You can't get this in a matter of hours. It is not possible. It's physically impossible. So use the logic to realize that when you see all the pieces that have to go in to really, really controlling the glider, it takes 25 to 60 hours of glider control for people to really start getting it where they have a really solid level of glider control. So think about that. How are you gonna get 25 to 60 hours of practice in Utah? It's not gonna happen. Or in Ohio, or in Florida, in some farmer's field, it's not gonna happen. Or on a beach where you don't get wind you know you know all day it takes exactly the right location in order to make it physically possible to get that many hours of practice into a 10-day class now one of the students in this video graduated with 127 flights and he was flying an extra small uh, another one of the students in this video graduated with 125 flights and he was flying an extra extra small another one of the students graduated about 60 something flights and he was flying uh, I think the smallest one he was flying was an extra small again. And another student graduated with about 90 flights flying an extra small as well, where they're progressing from they may have started on an extra large and then they go to a large and then a medium and then a small and then an extra small, then an extra extra small, where your skills are progressing. Now, skills do not progress. You don't get any skills at all in an hour it's not happening it's literally impossible so if you're not training in the correct location with someone that actually cares enough to make sure you learn all the pieces before you go getting in the sky then it's just not gonna work out glider control takes 25 to 60 hours of practice the only way you're gonna get that practice is in exactly the right location where you can go out there and train all day every day we would literally go out at like 7 a.m to 11 get you know four hours of practice yeah four hours of practice then we'd go back out at four or five and then go till dark another four hours so we're literally getting upwards of eight hours of practice and then when you get to flying you might be uh practicing as much as 10 11 hours a day or you might have days where you're only practicing three four five hours depends on the day but you start adding up the math and you are getting massive hours of practice it's the only way you're gonna learn how to fly for real now what happens if you don't have all of those pieces of glider control and you go to launch a glider made of cloth and string one loss of control where do you think that glider's going slap right in the prop and it makes a very distinct sound when you shred your glider in the prop it sounds like <laughs> and you shred a $3,800 glider and it destroys the prop and it rips the lines through the cage and it destroys the frame and everything just catastrophically blows up so if you go train with Joe Jimmy Bob that doesn't really give a crap about your life or your safety 
and doesn't train you properly, you know, one guy had his prop hit his foot, another guy chopped off two fingers, another guy just trips and falls, goes to a knee, the whole unit explodes, shreds his glider, he's $7,000 in damage, guy goes to some Joe Blow training on Fresh Breeze, breaks his back twice, other people die, they get seriously injured. The sport is incredibly safe. Literally, how many people have been seriously injured flying flat tops at super training? Zero. Not one single death, not one single single injury. Why? Because we make sure you know what the freak you're doing before we put you in the sky. It's literally the coolest and one of the safest sports you can possibly do if you get super training and the right gear. If you do it right and have someone actually make sure that you learn the proper skills before you go running and putting a glider and trying to run and pull this and lean that way and do all the loading. Before you do that, you have to have someone that cares enough to make sure that you're trained properly. Now, how do you know without a doubt I'm that guy? Because I'm the guy who pays for any damage that you do to the gear. <laughs> so when you come to super training, if you shred a $3,800 glider in the prop, who pays for it? I do. So who do you think is gonna put you in the sky if you're not ready? Not me, cause you're, I gotta pay for the damages. So for one, you're not getting hit with hidden costs cause literally people going elsewhere ask the hard questions and find out what it actually cost them. Because these people, I mean, the guy that got hit in the foot with his prop, I mean, it's thousands and thousands of dollars damage and that doesn't even count the hospital bills. You know, who's paying for the damage? If you're paying for the damage, you've now set it up where the instructor has a financial interest in your failing. They have, they are financially vested in they have every advantage of trying to chuck you into the air before you build proper skills because when you destroy the gear you have to pay for it and you got to buy all new gear and you know you can't just leave your gear unrepaired or unfixed and then some will even put you on a trike and go oh yeah it's easier to learn on a trike why because then when you totally destroy the gear, you do thousands more damage, because when you flip over a trike, it's even more violent, and you cause even more violent damage so that they can make a whole bunch more money. So is it easier to learn in a trike? No, it's just a lie to get you to spend a whole bunch of money repairing the gear because they're not training you properly. So you have to use some logic and reasoning and do some research and just take some basic intelligence to understand what does it take to learn real actual skills? How much glider control does that take? 25 to 60 hours. How are you gonna get 25 to 60 hours of glider control practice in an area where you can't kite all day? Where you can only practice maybe 15 minutes early in the morning or maybe you got 45 minutes here and there every third day. You think you're gonna go to some local instructor and that's gonna work out? No, it's gonna drag on forever. If they were gonna actually train you properly, it could take over a year in the wrong location. I mean, literally, if you hired me personally, sent out your private jet to pick me up and I were to train you in Pennsylvania, you just wasted all your money. That's with me as your instructor. It would take us a freaking year. It would be a complete total waste of time. We are not training you even with me as your instructor in Pennsylvania or New York or Ohio or Iowa. It's not gonna happen in Illinois because there's no possible way to get the sheer amount of hours of practice that it takes in that amount of time. That's why, I mean, it's like when you think about the location of training, why do you think we drive 1,500 miles from the mountains of Utah all the way to the coast of Texas? If we could just train you in a field right over here, there's literally a small airport right behind this mountain. We could just go out there and run down the runway, right? it'd be a total waste of time. Don't you think I would go right over there and train in my backyard if it would work out? Of course, absolutely. There's no way in heck I would put 3,600 miles on my vehicle to drive gear, you know, 
it's literally 1500 miles one way by the time i'm done with the trip i put about 3600 miles it takes a lot of effort to train people properly but you go to super training we provide the lodging you fly out we pick you up at the airport we take care of it and we provide all the gear and if you destroy the gear i pay for it so you can be dang sure that when i train you i'm gonna make darn sure you know what you're doing before i go trying to chuck you in the sky because if you totally destroy the gear i'm gonna actually pay for it and that would suck and i don't want to pay for it so i'm going to make sure that you have the right skills before i go having you fly that keeps you safe so you kind of have a money back guarantee on your life you know for darn certain i'm not going to be trying to chuck you in the air when you just don't have a solid level of control of the glider and if you if you're not controlling the glider why would you want to be in the sky on an aircraft you don't really have the ability to control it's not like an ATV and somebody just shows you, oh, hey, yeah, just hit the throttle and yeah, just go take it for a spin and see what you do. It doesn't work that way. You're talking about an aircraft and the loading and being able to control the pressure of the glider. And it just takes practice, hours of practice, 25 to 60 hours of practice. And in order to get that, it takes the right location. So the logic and reason and facts all go together to point to there is no training outside of super training challenge me prove me wrong link a video show anyone else's students attaining the skill levels that super students do let's see anybody else's student knock out 530 flights in their 10-day class and go from an extra large down to an extra 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 small like super lee who set a world record 530 flights the or another guy in his class he had 176 flights or other guys that uh super uh <laughs> tom knocked out 271 flights on his very first day of flying these are that's reality you can watch the videos from years and years over a thousand videos of people going through super training and attaining absolutely incredible things uh at, go look compare to other schools let's see any other school in the world show the results that's what makes the best training in the world it's not opinion oh i think i'm the best well who gives a crap it's about show what your students can do that's what makes you the best it's the guy who's actually turning out the students with the highest level of skill and ability by the end of that training that's what the best instructor is and challenge me i'm saying super training is so good most out there can't even do what my students can do challenge me it's like you learn something in the process of that challenge so it's like by all means challenge me prove me wrong in the act of trying to prove me wrong what you're actually going to do is learn just how right i am and how factual what i'm saying truly is I mean, it's very simple. If anybody out there, you know, if I was totally wrong, anybody could just link a video in the comments, bam, here it is. Yeah, this is me at my training at another school and you can see that I'm just way better than the super student. If that were actually true, link a video, prove me wrong, make me look like a total idiot liar, by all means. Because in reality, training, is a takes a load of work to train people properly if there was an instructor out there that was better than me i would send them students it would be so much easier i'd make so much more money if i could just sell you the gear and go oh yeah go train with that gear <laughs> i'll sell you the best and safest gear and then yeah, yeah yeah just go train with that guy he's better than me i would love that by all means show me the instructor that's better than me sadly the truth is there are no other people out there that are truly training people properly it does not exist if it does and there's someone better prove it it would be super easy to prove do you understand the logical reasoning of this if you shred a $3,800 glider in the prop seven times in a row I pay for it do you seriously think I'm going to be sticking you in the air if I'm not sure you're not going to destroy my gliders? I mean, it's like put your money where your mouth is, show the videos of the students' skills. And, you know, you got to understand it's much more difficult than people expect. It's not like, you know, just so many things that, you know, if you watch a YouTube video and get some basics, you can kind of figure it out. 
This is not that. There are many things that are not intuitive. And that's why I show videos like this at the day one and the day two and day three, where you can look at the students. It's like trying to get the difference between a, learn, a lean and a turn and get the pressure just right. And you're controlling the pitch with brake pressure up and down while at the same time you're doing left and right, while at the same time you're turning or leaning your body, while you're moving the correct direction, while you're raising and lowering your stance. And every single piece of it, and there's a hundred more, pieces that all have to be done in a split second at exactly the correct time. It's not something that happens by accident. It's something that happens with super training and super training only. And if there's another school out there that's actually producing students with this level of skill, show the video, prove me wrong. But from massive experience, I know exactly what it takes to get someone to knock out 530 flights by the end of their 10 days of super training. I know what that takes extremely well. So I know extremely well some dude training in the farmer's field in Iowa is not gonna do it, is not happening. I just have too much knowledge and experience of the sport to know that, you know, I just know that's not possible. It's not possible. So in the effect of trying to prove me wrong, it's literally do your research and please prove me wrong. Please show me some instructor out there that have some magic way to train people where they can produce incredible skills better than my students and I'll send them students. <laughs> I'll pay for you to go to their school. It would save me so much time and money if I didn't have to take all of that time and effort to make you freaking awesome. So until that time, which is never gonna come because the truth is the truth is the truth they're super training that's all there is to it you have to come to super training if you're not coming to super training you are not getting trained properly and you do not want to be caught dead wrong thinking that what i just said is inaccurate if you don't take the time to prove me wrong you're probably not smart enough to fly because if i'm right your life depends on it if i'm wrong it really should be pretty simple for you to prove it and if your life depends on it and you don't even take the time to do some research and figure out who's telling the truth and what is actually accurate and you know what's actually really happening in the sport you know you're not smart enough to fly flying's not for everyone aviation is for people that just are a little sharper than the average person a little bit smarter a little quicker you know a little more mentally stable a little higher level of capability it's like it's not for the person that's below average and just not too bright so if you're not willing to do the research to figure out who's actually telling the truth the sport's not for you don't do it because you're gonna end up not just wrong but dead wrong so that's bad i don't want you to get hurt i want you to have a total freaking blast like i do and like i enjoy helping other people just have a blast i have almost as much fun getting other people just rocking the skills as i do having fun flying myself so i just enjoy sharing it so give me a call come to super training do your research take the time do it right be smart and yeah I mean, it's not rocket science. Whoever's producing the skills is producing the skills. That's who you wanna learn from. There's a bee about to land on my hand. So don't get stung by people that don't know what they're doing, pretending that they're gonna train you in some farmer's field. That would not be bright. <laughs> Let's go flying, but do it the right way.